Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week, I'm gonna be giving you a few tips on how to build a funky bass groove using some of the simple concepts that I've covered in loads of other lessons. If you've not been over to TalkingBass.net, then be sure to go check it out straight after this lesson. There's over a hundred other lessons over there covering every aspect of bass playing, and if you sign up for free, you'll gain access to a load of exclusive bass practice resources, including the drum tracks that I use in this lesson. There's also a bunch of free ebooks like the Scale Reference Manual, and that's over in the library section. There's a forum, and there's also a bunch of exclusive courses. All of this is expanding all the time, so uh, go check it out. Okay, so let's get straight into this bass groove. Now, the foundation of any groove, be it funky or otherwise, is rhythm. So we're gonna to want to start with a cool drum beat. And it doesn't get any cooler or funkier than the famous funky drummer beat that you might know from the James Brown tune of the same name. So here's a rough version of that beat that I've recorded as a backing track. So let's first have a listen to where the bass drum hits are in that drum beat. And uh, we're going to use those as the core foundation for building this, uh, this bass groove. So um, let's have another listen. So I'm going to play the track again. So first of all, we've got one and. One and. Then we've got the and of three, okay? One and two, three and. And then we've got one on the E, the second sixteenth note of uh, the fourth beat. So I'll analyze that in a second and go through it, but uh, just have a listen out for it. So I'm just gonna play along with that, uh, along with that bass drum beat so you can hear where they are. Okay, so you should be able to hear those bass drums in there, and uh, that's what we're going to be copying. So now let's slowly try counting through that groove uh, away from the drum beat, okay? So first of all, we just need to be able to count it. So um, we're going to use the counting of one and two, three and four reando. One and two, three and four reando. So you just need to be able to say that in time along with a pulse, okay? So with your foot tapping on each beat, we have, and I'm gonna click instead of the foot. So we've got one and two, three and four reando. One and two, three and four reando. One and two, three and four reando. And that's all you have to do. And we're just gonna put certain notes onto those beats, okay? So uh, first of all, let's try putting them on the one and. So very simple, and we're gonna use a D, fifth fret of the, uh, of the A string there. So we've got that D. So we've got one and two, three and four reando. 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 So we're just playing that D on the one and the and. The first one, one and the and of one, okay? One and two, three and four and. So just one more time. One and two, three and four e and. One and two, three and four e and. One and two, three and four e and. Now, next note is on the and of three. So that's gonna be here. One and two, three and four e and. One and two, three and four e and one and two three and four e and one and two three and four e and okay so that'll seem a little trickier so um, you want to go round and round and round on that until you can count it and uh, and then you can move on to the next bit so the next one we're going to add one on the e of four e and so four e and okay so four e and so very very slowly we have one and two, three and four, e and a one, e, etc. So, 
one and, not one E. <laughs> so, round and round. One and two, three and four, E and a one and two, three and four, E and a one and two, three and four, E and a one, etc. So, then we build up speed. So, a little quicker. One and two, three and four, E and a one and two, three and four, E and a one and two, three and four, E and a one and two, three and four, E and a. Okay, and a little quicker. One and two, three and four, E and a one and two, three and four, E and a. Okay, now I know that when you're counting it like this, it's a lot harder than it is when you're just listening to a drum beat and just putting the beats in there, you know. I find that a lot more difficult than just going, you know, just, you know, putting all that kind of stuff in. It's a lot easier when you can just instinctively do it. But uh, counting it in this way gives you accuracy and, you know, you learn where each of these beats is in relation to a, in relation to a pulse, okay? So I would definitely advise going through it, you know, very systematically like that with the, uh, with the count and then just gradually build up in speed. And then if, you know, if you can get it just by feel, then that's fine. You know, just listen to what I play when we play it up to speed. And if you can just do it instinctively, that's fine. But what I do find is that a lot of students that I have they listen to what I play, try to repeat it back to me, and they think they're getting it right. They think, oh, well, that's good enough, and it's not. You know, it's, it's usually off in some way. You know, they might have gone on the beat instead of, you know, the, the 16th note off, you know. Because playing these 16th notes can be quite challenging, you know, getting these little syncopated uh, hiccups like this. So, uh, so, yeah, so do try just going through with the counting and just see how you do. So now for you all out there that want to just try getting it by feel, I'm going to play along with the drum beat. I will try the count as well with it so that you can hear where it is in relation. But uh, just have a listen to how I play this over the beat. So this is all on the D, okay? Now if I was to just count along, one and two, three and four e and a one and two, three and four e and a one and two, three and four e and a one and two, three and four e and a one and two, three and four e and a. Okay? So like I say, it's a lot harder when you try to go one and a two and a three and a four and a at that kind of speed. Uh, but getting used to that actual, you know, the the note that just comes after the beat on the four e and a it is important to try breaking it down into the subdivisions just so you can hear where it is in relation to that beat, okay? Um, so, uh, so yeah, if you have any problems, slow it down and then just uh, try for accuracy with the subdivisions. So that's our main accents in the beat and we can use them to develop a groove. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to play, you know, that exact rhythm all the time. We can miss notes out and we can add notes around it, but we need to know that if we want to lock in with those drums, then those accents are the best ones to work with. So before we add any more rhythms in there, let's try adding some notes because the notes are probably going to dictate how the rhythms work. So uh, this is where we get to look at which chords and scales are the best for funky grooves. And for a single chord vamp like this one going round and round, it doesn't get any better than uh, the good old dominant seven chord. Now, the dominant 7 chord is what we have when we see a chord symbol that's just got a 7 in there, like a D7, G7, or C7. We just don't have the word dominant in the symbol, and the chord sounds like this. So you can hear that already has a pretty bluesy, funky sound, especially if we put it in a funky rhythm like this. So, you know, a pretty bluesy, funky sound. Uh, much more so than, uh, let's say, a major 7, which is a lot more bittersweet. You know, that just doesn't have that funky sound. Uh, minor 7, that's not too bad because we've got that flat 7 up at the top, but compared to the dominant 7, it just doesn't have that same feel. And that's because this dominant 7 chord has got this tritone interval between the 3rd and the 7th. Okay? Now you don't have to worry about what a tritone is, basically just means uh, two, uh, well, three whole steps, but uh, 
on its own, that little pattern there sounds a bit evil. You know, it's got a bit of metal about it. But when you put the root note below it, we get that cool sound. So, that's the dominant seven. And that's pretty much the basis for all uh, standard blues progressions. You know, you'll get all of the chords in a blues progression a dominant seven. there that all those chords uh, give it that bluesy sound so yeah dominant sevens they're great for the funky stuff so I know that I'm studying playing you know that chord on bass but how can we apply the notes of that chord to the bass line well this is where the arpeggios that me and every other bass teacher on the planet talk about over and over you know to the level of death by boredom if you've seen many of my other bass videos I'm sure that you're gonna know all about that dominant seven arpeggio pan but if not Fear not, because I'm going to quickly run through it. So if we start on a D here, 5th fret of the A string, and we just run up through the notes, we've got D, F sharp, A, C. Okay, so D, F sharp, A, C. So I'll just go through that in terms of the frets. We've got the 5th fret of the A string, then we've got F sharp there, 4th fret of the D string, then we've got the A there at the 7th fret of the D string, and then the C there at the 5th fret of the G string. And we can put the octave in there as well, which is the 7th fret of the G string. So, and you want to play up and down. Okay, so that is simply the notes of a D7 chord played one note at a time across the bass. Okay, and like I say, if you've watched many of my videos, you will know all this already. So, that's a D7 arpeggio, okay? And uh, you might also realize that it's a major arpeggio, D, F sharp and A, with the flat seven on the top, the minor seven. So in terms of its construction, we've got one, three, five, flat seven, or root, major third, perfect fifth, and minor seven. So that's pretty much everything you can learn about the dominant seven construction, okay? So play that up and down and get it under your fingers. When you apply arpeggios to bass lines, it also pays to look at the notes that we have below the root note. So to do this, all we're gonna do is take all the notes that we played above the root note and take them down the octave. So we've got the D, F sharp, A, C, you know, and the octave there. If we take the F sharp and the A and the C, and take those down an octave, those are the notes below it, okay? So we've got F sharp, second fret of the E string, A, fifth fret of the E string, C, third fret of the uh, A string, and then just back to the root notes again. So if we work up through the arpeggio, and back down, and then continue down, down to that F sharp, and then back, we've got a nice palette of notes to work from. So. So instead of just having that standard little box shape that everybody always relies on, you know, we've expanded it a little. Not a lot, but we've got a few more notes to play with. So now we know the notes of that arpeggio, we can use it as the main palette of notes for uh, working on our funky bass groove. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply those notes to the rhythm that we've already uh, played, but we're going to expand on it a little. So I'm just going to play a basic line and we're going to use that as a springboard for other ideas, okay? So this is the first one to get down. Now, it's not exactly the same as the rhythm that we played earlier because there's an extra two notes in there, but I'll go over that. So here's the first line, okay? With the drum beat. the first line that we're working with and uh, as you can see when I played up through it we are simply working up through the notes of the arpeggio so that's the D7 arpeggio there now the original uh, uh, rhythm that we used was and 
those notes are in there, you know, those rhythms are in there, it's just that I've added a couple, okay? Now if you were to just play with our original uh, rhythm, it'd sound like this. So that's on one note. Now if I introduce the two notes that I've got there in, uh, in the new riff, it'd sound like this. So I've got the D and then I've got the top C there, 5th fret of the G string, leading up to the octave of the 7th fret. Again. Back to the single note. those two notes in there so we've got the F sharp and the A in between there of the note lengths you want to make sure to keep them fairly short and detached we don't want full duration like this I mean there's nothing wrong with that it sounds okay but uh, in terms of trying to get that funky momentum uh, you want to keep them a little shorter like this so each one of them is about an eighth note in length there if I was to play it with the drum beat you'll get the idea full duration so it's a little bit of a lazier feel which you might want for some stuff but uh, but if you want to get a bit more drive in there So that line sort of works, but it is a little bit bland. So now let's try adding a few ghost notes in there for a bit of uh, variation and a bit of drive and momentum. So if you don't know how to play ghost notes, then I definitely advise you to check out a few of my other lessons on TalkingBass.net, um, where uh, you know I go into these in depth. Now I'll include the lessons in the info below because I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to spend too much time working on them. Uh, it's a fairly big topic in itself. Uh, but basically, with ghost notes, we're looking to mute the string within the fingers of the uh, of the fretting hand there, so we press them lightly on the string, and then when we pluck them, we get that dead sound. Okay? You can hear in there. That's where ghost notes come into play. So, um, like I say, if you have any problems with any of those things, if you've never played them before, then check out some of the other lessons and then come back to this and, uh, and then you can dive straight in. Otherwise, I'm going to be spending 30 minutes going over ghost notes. So, uh, yeah, just go check those out. So, we're going to put ghost notes before each note as we rise up through the arpeggio. So, uh, it's going to sound like this, slowly. So, you can hear the ghost notes in there. Okay, so up to speed. Okay, so you can hear how it's changing the sound a bit a little. So without ghost notes, with Okay, so I'll just go through again slowly, just pointing out where they are, and then you can just put them in there. So we've got the, uh, the D and the F sharp, so we've got no ghost notes there. Then when we get to the A, 7th fret of the, uh, of the D string, that's where we put one in, so... Okay, so we'll just try that in isolation. Slowly. And I'm playing a ghost note on the D string. 
There's the ghost note. <laughs> and then we've got one before the, uh, the C. And I'm putting the ghost note there again on the D string before going up to the G string. And then again we have one before the octave D up on the G string at the uh, seventh fret. And that time I played the ghost notes on the G string. And then I can actually use a ghost note to come back to our original uh, root note. So up to speed. So you just want to try that slowly and then just gradually build up speed, okay? So with the drum beat. try a little variation on that by instead of moving up to the octave we'll come back to the fifth okay so instead of this we're gonna have this so we're coming back there back to the A there and if we alternate between them try any kind of variation that you want both melodically or rhythmically and uh, you know once you've got a basic structure to work from like this you can just mess around with it however you want so uh, let's now try adding a couple of notes and taking one out just as a variation just to see how this might work so what we're going to do is we're going to take out one of the root notes one of the d's there so that we hold this d then we're going to add a little 16th note in there on the uh, on the f sharp at the third and then we're going to uh, add another one up at the seventh on the c and that's going to sound like this okay so we've got d held then ghost note and then we've got the f sharp twice so we've got Then we move up to the A there, at the 7th fret of the D string, so... Okay, so we've got the two little uh, notes up there at the C as well, so... So ghost note before the C. in there at the end so as well as working up to the octave just as before we can work back to the fifth so that sound like this very slowly even slower okay so if we alternate between those octave and fifth we'll get this Okay, and with the drum beat.
So these have all just been progressive variations that we've used and you can hear how we've gone from that original bass drum pattern on one note to that more intricate groove. But it's all still based on a foundation and set of bass drum accents. So far we've only played that groove ascending from the root note so it tends to have a very arpeggio-esque feel to it. But uh, if we drop down to play the groove from the third below the root, then we get a different sound, like this. Okay, so above the root. Below. Okay, so I'll just very quickly run through that. So I'm starting with the D on the uh, with the with the uh, fourth finger there, the pinky, so that we can drop down there down to the F sharp. So the F sharp is down at the second fret of the E string. So we've got the D down to the F sharp, then to the A at the fifth fret of the E string. So. and then up to the C at the 3rd fret of the A string. Okay, so and there's all those little ghost notes in there, so just listen for that. And also, this uh, this is available to download from TalkingBass.net, so if you're at TalkingBass.net, just hit the download link below, and uh, if you're on YouTube, have a look in the info below, and that'll take you to the uh, correct page. So. Now, one thing to uh, bear in mind is that when we work up, we worked up to the octave and then back down, but of course we don't have that note there. So what we're going to do is just stay on the C to lead it back into the root note, which gives us this slowly. Okay, so with the drum beat. drop back down to the fifth, just like we did on the uh, ascending one. And uh, alternating. So that should give you an idea of how we can use rhythm and chord tones to just come up with a funky bass line. So try playing around with those riffs and in the next lesson we'll have a look at how we can incorporate scale notes and chromatics to give us even uh, cooler sounds in there. Uh, but for now, please like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel and also go on over to uh, TalkingBass.net for more exclusive bass goodies. Okay, see you later!